Welcome to the channel. In this tutorial, we will see how we can set up the Visual Studio Code for writing, executing and debugging C++ programs. In order to continue with this video, you need to download and install Visual Studio Code and you need to download and install a tool set for C++ and we can install MinGW64 in Windows to get the uh, GCC G++ installed and also we need a debugger if you don't have all these programs, then I have the tutorials. I'm going to put the link in the description box. You guys can check that out and install those programs. Now, before continuing with this video, the first thing that we do is we will make sure that we have all the necessary programs uh, installed in the computer. So click on the start button, type in CMD and open up the command prompt. And in the command prompt, type in G++ space minus minus version and you should get some version number displayed in here if you get an error message stating that g++ is not a recognized command or something like that then it means that uh, the c++ tool set is not installed you need to install it once you get some version number displayed in here like this then it means you are good to go the next thing that we're gonna do here is we're gonna check the version of gdb that is the debugger uh, installed in the computer so type in gdb space minus minus version and hit the enter button and again you will get some version number displayed if you get an error message here then it means you need to install this program the link for the tutorial is available in the description box okay now once we have these two programs available in the computer we can close the command prompt and uh, we can open up the visual studio code so here i'm going to open up the visual studio code and the first thing that we do here is we will set up a workspace for writing and executing the c++ programs so i'm going to go to file i'm going to say add folder to workspace and here i'm going to save the files and folders in the desktop if you want you guys can store it in any other location and here i'm going to create a new folder so right click then new folder I'm going to say C++ programming and after that we will open up this folder and here inside this folder we will create another folder new folder and I'm going to say programs and after that we will select this folder and we will click on this add button. Now if you look at the explorer in here it is a first icon which says explorer when we hover on it. You know, we can see untitled workspace and we can see the folder that we have just added. Now, the next thing that we do is we will go to file and we will say save workspace as. And this time again, I'm going to go to desktop. I'm going to open up the C++ programming folder that I have created before. And here I'm going to save my workspace. I'm going to say CPP workspace. You guys can uh, give any name. After that, click on save and now we have the workspace and we have the folder now the next thing that we do is we will create a simple program now i'm going to select the programs folder which is available in this explorer and i'm going to click on new folder so what i'm going to do is inside this program folders whenever i create a program you know i'm going to place them in separate folders okay so here now i'm going to create a new folder i'm going to say hello world click outside and the hello world folder is created now inside this folder we will create the file so select the hello world folder click on new file icon and here i'm going to say hello world dot cpp dot cpp is the extension for the c++ files hit the enter button hello world dot cpp file is created and it has been opened here in the editor now i'm going to close this welcome window welcome tab and here now what we can do is we can write a simple c++ program it is a very simple program so i'm going to forward this video okay now i have created a very simple program in this program we have uh, defined a variable called as number and we have initialized it with the value of zero and then after that we have changed the value of this number variable and then we are displaying that here and then we are displaying goodbye a very simple program now I'm just wondering why I gave the name hello world because you know there is nothing about hello world in this program but you know we will work with this. 
Okay, now the next thing that we're gonna do here is we will install an extension. So what we do is we will click on this extensions icon and uh, here in this search bar we will search C slash C++ and it will display all the extensions matching for this search query and here the first extension is C slash C++ and it provides intelligence debugging and uh, code browsing feature for C and C++ so we can install this extension and it has been developed by Microsoft so we will install it and in the bottom right corner you guys can see the installation happening you have to wait for it to finish completely now the extension is installed and also you guys can see the tutorials for a particular compiler and a platform so all these links are available in here now what we do is we will close this extension tab and also we will go back to the explorer now one thing that i forgot to mention and that is after writing the program make sure that you save the program and also you guys can go to file and make sure that auto save is selected so that whenever we make any modification to the program it will be saved automatically okay now the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that some specific c++ properties are used for all the programs that we're gonna be writing in this workspace to do that we will click on view we will click on command palette and here we will type in c slash c++ colon edit and we get two options one is edit configuration by using the user interface edit configurations using the json file now you can directly edit on the json file or you guys can use the user interface to do the same thing we're gonna click on this uh, user interface option edit configuration ui now once i click on that if you look at the programs folder then we have a new folder created called as dot vs code if i open up this folder now then we can see ccpp properties.json a new file is created this file will contain whatever the configurations uh, that we uh, specify for this workspace okay now here in this tab we can see the uh, settings that we can make we are not going to make uh, many changes but if you scroll down then you guys can see c++ standard uh, gnu++ 14 is selected click on that and make sure that gnu++ 20 is selected whatever the uh, latest standard is available select that one now after making that modification we will uh, close this tab and uh, we will come back to the hello world.cpp file and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna close the visual studio code and uh, we will open it up again close it open it up now here if you look at this program then i'm getting some error and the reason for that is i misspelled namespace so i have to make sure that you know i write the program properly now after correcting the mistake that i have made in this program the next thing that we have to do is we have to build an executable file from this source file and we have to run that executable file in order to see the output so here what we have to do is we have to set up a build task for generating the executable file for this program and we can do that by clicking on the terminal clicking on configure default build task now as the option says here whatever the build task that we're going to configure now it will be the default build task for the c++ programs okay we will click on it once we click on that it will open up the command palette and it will display some options now here it will display the compiler options now what we do is we will use the gnu c++ compiler which is the g++ so here we will select c slash c++ colon g++ dot exe so we will click on that option and once we do that in this dot vs code folder a new file is created called as tasks dot json and if you look at the contents of this file then uh, we can see the type which is cpp build and also the label or the name of the task and then we can see the command used and also we can see the arguments passed for that command here if you want to make any modifications then you can make that uh, here i'm gonna make a couple of modifications one is in this arcs section i'm gonna say minus g3 
minus g is used for generating the default debug information minus g3 will make sure that the executable file generated will contain the maximum debug information after that i'm going to add one argument and that is for displaying the warnings in the program for example in our program let us say we will create some variables and uh, if we don't use it then the compiler will generate the warning for us and to specify that we will write in minus capital w a l l minus wall and after that we will separate these arguments by using comma just like the way i'm writing in here okay after that save this uh, file you know you can press the control s now uh, after this i don't want to make any other modification i'm going to close this and now what we can do is we can use the task that we have configured and we can uh, you know generate the executable file but before that i will close the visual studio code and i will open it up again you know just to make sure that whatever the changes that we have made for these files that changes are applied okay now we will generate the executable file by using the task that we have uh, created so here make sure that you are in the hello world.cpp file and click on the terminal and click on run build task which will run the default task that we have configured previously otherwise if you want to have options of selecting the task then you guys can uh, you know click on the run task which will display the different tasks that you have uh, you know set here i'm going to click on run build task now in the terminal it says starting the build and it says build finished successfully and if you look at the hello world folder then we have an executable file here called as hello world.exe now what we can do is we can run this executable file and we can get the output of this program so in order to run this executable file we need a terminal so i'm going to click on this plus in here which will provide us a new terminal and here if we look at the path then we are in this programs folder but the executable file that we want to run which is hello world.exe is actually present inside a folder called as hello world so what we do is we will go into the hello world folder which is present inside programs so we will type in cd space and then hello world with this cd command you don't have to use the double quotes if the name contains space but i'm just using it and after that hit the enter button and now we are in this hello world folder and we can run this hello world.exe now so we will type in the name of the file which is hello space world.exe and this time since the name contains space we have to enclose that in double quotes otherwise you will get the message stating that hello is not a valid program or something like that okay after that hit the enter button it says number is 30 goodbye that is the output of our program now here what we are doing is we are using the task and we are building the executable file then we are opening up the terminal we are writing this command in order to see the output if you want to see the output as quickly as possible then you guys can uh, use another method that i have mentioned in a separate video where we will use an extension called as code runner you have the option of clicking on a button it will build the program and it will run it for you now here if you don't want to use the extension and you want to know how you can set up a task for building the executable file and running that executable file at one try then uh, we're gonna see that and for checking out you know how we can debug this program this step or this process that i'm doing at this moment is not required I just wanted to show you guys how you can set up a task you know which will build the executable file and it will run it for you in just one go so here what we do is we will uh, open up the task.json which is present in the .vs code folder and we can see the tasks and whatever the content that we have between these curly brace as i have selected here it is actually the content of a particular task so what we do is we will copy this task or task contents and then we will go to the end of this task after the closing curly brace we will add a comma we will uh, hit the enter button we will go to the new line and then we will paste the content that we have copied in other words what we are doing is we are just duplicating the 
task which is uh, created for us by the extension okay now what we do is we will make some modifications and uh, here the first thing that we do is we will change the type and you know this is the second task that we have you know the duplicate code that we have so i'm gonna remove this type and i'm gonna specify shell after that we can change the label for example i can say um, run c++ program that is the name of the task and also we can specify the compiler used which is uh, gnu c++ g++ okay after that uh, we will not change the command value here but what we do is whatever the arguments that we have specified in here we will specify that along with the command so what we do we will copy this for example minus g3 and we will come to the end of this command add a space and we will paste that again we will add a space we will come back to this argument section copy the next argument we will come here back to command we will paste it similarly we will do it so i'm going to copy this file i'm going to paste it in here you know all these arguments we will specify that along with the command instead of this args okay and we will separate them by using a space which is very important so i'm going to copy minus o paste it in here add a space then i'm going to copy this last argument here i'm going to paste it now for the time being i'm going to close this explorer by clicking on this explorer icon so that we can work with a large area now here what we are doing is we are calling this c++ compiler and we are passing all these arguments the first argument will tell the compiler to create the executable file with maximum debug information and this argument will tell the compiler to generate the warnings if there is any warning for the program and then this is the file that we want to compile along with the path and with this flag we are stating that we want to give a name for the executable file and this is the name for the executable file along with the path and the extension for the executable file is .exe because in windows the executable files will have .exe extension now this command here what it does is it generates the executable file but what we want to do is we want to run that executable file and to do that we will insert another command along with whatever the command that we are using here so to insert that we will add a space after this dot uh, exe and we will type in and and then we will come back to this last section that we have in this args we will copy that and we will paste that here in the end which will look something like this so here uh, make sure that you add this space properly and also you specify it just like the way i'm doing in here so what we are doing here is we are specifying two commands one this one is for building the executable file and after that this one is actually for running that executable file so we are combining those two tasks here and with this and we are separating multiple commands so if you wanted to execute one more command then here we have to use and and we have to specify that okay after that modification now since we have specified all these arguments in the command only we don't need the args section so we will delete it completely so there is no args section and also we will delete this group section which will say that this is the default task you know this is not the default task whatever the task that we have configured before that is a default task so we will delete it like this so now we have a task here that we have created which will build the executable file and it will run it for us in one go so now we will go to the hello world.cpp and we will open up the explorer and uh, here i'm gonna delete this executable file so i'm gonna right click i'm gonna say delete then move to recycle bin okay now in this hello world folder we have the source file only 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to use the task that we have set up in order to build the executable file and to run it in one go. So make sure that you are in this hello world.cpp file. Go to terminal and click on run task. And now it will display the tasks that we can run. We have two options. One is the default task that we have configured in the beginning, which is for building the active file. And the second task that we have here is called as run C++ program by using G++. And this is the task that we have configured. So now what we do is we will click on it. Now in terminal something happens, but it will display some error messages. Now this error message is expected. Now why we get the error message here is if you look at the folder name and file name, hello world, then they contain space. So here, since we are executing a shell command, the spaces will separate them. So whenever we have space in the file name or folder name, what we have to do is we have to enclose them in double quotes. So we have to make that one modification. So we will open up the tasks.json and I'm going to close the explorer. And here we will go to the uh, task that we have set up that is run C++ program, which is of type shell. And here, if you look at this command and you have to think where we might have space. So this file name can contain space the executable name that we are providing along with the path that can contain space. So what we do is we will place these values in double quotes. But if I go to use a double quote here like this, then it will display error. That's because the command here that we are writing is actually uh, placed or written by using double quotes. So what we do here is we will escape the meaning of double quote by using backslash and then double quote. So we will enclose the content of this file in double quotes, backslash double quote. After that, we have minus O, then we have this entity, which will specify the name for the executable file along with its path. So this can contain the space. So we will place this between the double quotes. So here in the beginning, backslash double quote, and after exe, backslash double quote, okay? And also while running the program, if the executable name contains spaces, then it will not work. So we have to place that in double quotes also. So after and we will type in backslash double quote and after exe, we will type in backslash double quote. So that's it. Um, you have to take your time and make this modification very slowly. You know, make sure that you don't make any mistakes here. After that, save this task, go back to the hello world.cpp and open up the explorer. Now what we do here is we will run the task that we have set up. So we will go to terminal, we will say run task and now we will select run C++ program. That is the task that we have configured. Now here it says executing the task. So what it has done is it has generated the executable. So we can see that in this hello world folder and also it has run that executable file. So here we can see the output of the program. This terminal is reused. So, um, you know, if we run it again without closing this uh, terminal panel, then uh, all the contents of the previous run will be here. Okay. So I'm going to kill this terminal now and uh, I'm going to go to terminal run task and run C++ program by using G++. Now you guys can see it has generated the executable file and it has run it for us. So this is the output of the program. Okay. Now the last thing that we're going to see in this tutorial is how we can debug this C++ program by using Visual Studio Code. So what we do is we will click on this run option or run icon which is present just above the extensions and once we do that we can see run and debug a button we will click on that button and here it will open up the command palette and it will display some options um, here we will use c++ gdb slash lldb because gdb is the debugger that we have installed so we will click on that now it will display the tasks 
that we have for building the executable file in order to debug the program it will uh, it will build the executable file and then it will use that executable file for debugging the program so here we will go with g++.exe build and debug active file okay that is the uh, task that we have set in the beginning the first task we will click on that and now what happens is in the terminal we can see build started build finished and now the debugger will be opened the program will be loaded for debugging and uh, since we don't have a breakpoint the program has terminated its execution in the debug console you can see some information in the terminal you can see the output of the program and also in the left hand side we can see variable and other sections we will talk about that in just a minute okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to close this panel and uh, i'm going to go back to the explorer and if you look at the dot vs code folder now we have another file called as launch.json this file contains the information for debugging the program if you want to make any modifications then you can make them for example one modification normally people do is uh, stop at entry which means that when you debug the program the program will stop at the beginning of the program so it will stop at the main function then you can use the whatever the debugging commands available to you know go through the program and you guys can see what's happening by default it is set to false if you want you can change that one to true one more thing if you make any modifications here to you know whatever the files present in the dot vs code folder then i recommend you guys to close the visual studio code and open it up again okay i'm not going to make any modifications in here and now i'm going to go back to the hello world dot cpp that is the file containing the c++ program now the last thing that we're going to see here is how we can set up a breakpoint and how we can debug the program now if you take your mouse cursor to just before this line number then you guys can see a red dot appearing so if you left click on your mouse then it will place a breakpoint in that particular line number for example i'm going to set a breakpoint at this line number 7 okay and uh, after that i'm going to go to this run and then now we can see the debug configuration selected for us so what we can do is we can click on this uh, button which says start debugging when we hover on it so if i click on that what it does is it will generate the executable file first then it will load that in the debugger now this content is actually the output of the previous run so the output of the current run will appear here and also if you look at this program then the program has stopped at this line number 7 that's because i have set the breakpoint at line number 7 if you go to the debug console then you guys can see that information here it says uh, there is a breakpoint at uh, line number 7 so uh, in this particular statement now in this uh, variable section you guys can see the local variable and the values they are containing for example in this case the number variable is containing 0 now and also we can see the call stack section and also we have the buttons displayed in here for uh, continuing for uh, stepping over stepping into step out and uh, stopping the debugger and all this stuff so now uh, what we do is we will uh, click on the step over and now what it does is it executes the line number 7 and because of that the number variables value should be changed it should contain 30 now so if you look at this local variable value then number is number variable is containing 30 if you go to the terminal then nothing is displayed in here as the output because uh, till now we have not displayed anything uh, in this program again i'm going to go to step over i'm going to click on this now it will execute this uh, line number 8 so after executing this line number 8 uh, we have the uh, c out statement in here which will display the value of the number variable so that is been displayed in here in the terminal so number is 30 again i'm going to click on this step over so it has printed goodbye we which we guys can see here and after that we are almost in the end of this program so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on this uh, continue which will uh, you know continue till we have another breakpoint in the program but in this case we don't have any breakpoint so the program has terminated 
okay now this is the output that we guys can see in the debug console we can see the debug information and while debugging if you want to provide any uh, debugging commands then you guys can specify that here okay so this is how we can set up the visual studio code for writing executing and debugging c programs if you like this video hit the like button if you don't like it hit the dislike button if you want to say something then write that in the comment box for more tutorials like this do subscribe to the channel thank you for watching i'll see you later in the next video